Hi, this is Simon Alpstall and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be taking a look at this slot machine effect. So I want to stress that there's no single best way of achieving this effect. And in a follow up to this tutorial, I'll be showing you a different method. But I've chosen this method first because of its overall performance efficiency. So in this instance, I've done this with letters, characters, but we could do also do it with numbers or we could do it with images. So a quick word about my project setup. I've gone for 1920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 24 frames a second and a duration of seven seconds. So the first step is to select the text tool, click in the canvas and type the letter A. I'm going to come over to the inspector and let's select a fixed width font. I'm going to select Menlo. And the reason for that is we don't want our characters to be jumping around. We want them to stay locked and that's what fixed width fonts do. So I'm going to set the size to 200 and I'm going to set the alignment to center. I'm going to come to properties, right click, reset parameter to center it up. I'm also going to take the rectangle tool down here and I'm just going to draw a little rectangle around my character there and I'm going to move that to the back of the group and again let's just center that up and come over to the rectangle shape properties. Let's set a fill color of sort of mid gray something like that and let's give it a white outline of say five. So now I just want to adjust that position of my text. So I'm going to come to the baseline here and line it up. So baseline value of minus 70. So it's sitting in the middle of that rectangle. Okay, now the important thing to do is to come to my motion preferences. And we want to select the time tab here. And we just want to make sure that the frame numbering starts from one rather than from zero. It just makes this operation easier and more comprehensible. So having done that, so down here in the time, I'm going to type 27. And then with the group selected, I'm going to hit O on the keyboard. And what that does is it shortens that whole group down to 27 frames in duration. So having done that, let's select the text again. Let's come to behaviors. Let's come to text animation and sequence text. So what we want to do is we want to cycle through the letters of the alphabet. And there's a very handy option for doing that. So if we come to parameter, add, format, character offset, let's enter a character offset of 27 because we want to cycle through those characters. And we want to set the sequencing to to rather than from. And now you'll see that that cycles through the letters of the alphabet. And on frame 27, we loop back from Z to the A that we started with. And that's important for the method that we're going to use. OK, so next what we're going to do is we're going to take that group and we're going to right click and make clone layer and then let's turn off the original. So with our clone selected, we're going to come up to Object and then select Replicate. So this gives us a rectangle. We don't want a rectangle. We want to switch the shape to Line. And let's make some changes here. So I'm going to set the X start to zero, leave the Y start at zero, X end at zero, but the Y end, I'm going to set to minus 5200, like so. And the reason I'm using 5200 here is that it's 26 times 200. In other words, the number of characters times the character height. And the number of points we want to set to 27. Now I've made a mistake here. Our rectangle is not within the group of the uh, characters. So I'm going to drag that out into the character group and move it to the back. And then we can delete this other group. 
Sorry about that. Let's now fix this so that it's giving us the letters that we want. I'm going to come down here and turn off play frames. And now the key thing to do is here, I'm going to open it out for you so you can see, source frame offset, we're going to set that to one. And now I think you'll see if we scroll up the replicator, you'll see that that's put our characters into a strip like that, starting with A and ending with A. So now I want to set up my slots. So I'm going to make a, a new group here. So object new group. Let's come to the library, generators, generators. Let's add a color solid. And I also want to add, just for fun, some concentric shapes like that. Come to my color solid. Let's set this color to mid gray. Let's come to the concentric shapes. Let's come over to its opacity, set that to 20. And I'm just going to set the inner cut off there to 475, just to give us a, a little bit of space in the middle. So now what we want to do is add a mask to this group that matches our rectangle shape. So let's just remind ourselves what that was. So I'll come back down to that rectangle geometry. Let's tidy this up a little bit, actually. Let's set that height to 200. And I'm going to set that width to 150. So now I know that I want to set my slot to those same dimensions. So come back to that group there with our foreground in it. I'm going to come down here and select the rectangle mask tool. Just draw a rough rectangle mask like that. I'm going to set its mask blend mode to subtract. So it gives us a cutout. And then let's open up the size here and 150 for the width and 200 for the height. And let's just make sure we've got it centered up. Right click, reset parameter. And now it's fitting our background. OK, so we want to make five of these. So I'm going to duplicate that five times. Now I could do right click duplicate. But what I'm going to do is you're going to use the shortcut Command D. So I'm going to do that four times. Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D. This first one down here, I'm going to come over and set its X position to negative 350. This top one, I'm going to set its X position to positive 350. Then holding down the Shift key, I'm going to select the bottom one and the top one. And I'm going to come to Object, Alignment, Distribute, Horizontal Centers. And watch what happens with those five masks. They are now aligned perfectly without my having to set the position of each one. So we can now come back and start to think about the animation of this effect. So first of all, I want to animate the replicator. So I'm going to do that with a behavior. So behaviors, replicator, sequence replicator. Now for the parameter, I want to add position. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate the Y position and we're going to enter a value of minus 5200. So now a few more steps. We've got to set the unit size to all. And then let's set up a number of loops for this. So I'm going to go for 16 because we want it to cycle through quite a few times. And then I'm going to come to properties and I'm going to set the Y position to positive 5200. And that'll just reset everything to the middle. So now if I press play, you'll see that we've got that continuously cycling set of characters. So this is quite a good start. What we're going to do to fill up all the different slots, though, is we're going to use a clone of this replicator. So let's right click and make clone layer. So I want to turn off the replicator itself. And so now our clone is looking exactly the same. But what we're going to do is we're going to come to the timing for the clone. Open that up. And I'm going to change the time remap to variable speed. 
And then I want to open the keyframe editor so we can come to window keyframe editor or command eight if you want. And that shows us the retime value here. If it doesn't, then select animated from that menu there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this last keyframe. So I've drawn around it like that. And then I'm going to hit delete and you'll see that line goes flat. And now we don't get any animation at all. So what we're going to do is something quite interesting, which is to apply a behavior to that retime value. So click there, add parameter behavior, overshoot. Now I'm just going to open up the keyframe editor a little bit so we can see a bit more what's happening here. So I'm going to set a ramp duration of 95 and an end value of, well, if we look at our overall project length, it's 168. So let's set 168 as the end value for now. So now if we press play, you'll see that that cycles through from a start value of zero to an end value of 168. But right at the end, it stops on our A character. So let's add a bit of interest. We're going to increase the acceleration, say to 50, and you'll see that that's made a nice curve on the start of it. So it's going to start slow and then it's going to come to the end and stop. But we wanted to come to the end before the end of our sequence. So I'm going to set an end offset value of, I think, 70. I'll try to remember that number. So now you'll see that it hits the end just around about there. So let's see how that plays. Like that. So now what we can do is if we come to the end of our sequence, we can select the character that we want to land on. So in this case, I want to land on the character O. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just scroll in that number field till the O appears in that window. So that end value is now 98. So now we go increase in speed and we get to O on that character because I'm going to spell out the word slots. So I hope you've understood the, the principle of that. It just gives us, if I close this down a little bit so we can see a bit more, just on the end here, it gives us a very nice little little jump. We don't want a huge jump, just a little one like that. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to call this one center because that's my center slot and I'll duplicate it. And let's call this one left. And let's move its position over to negative 350 to line up with that other slot there. Come to the overshoot behavior. Let's come to the end of our project. I want this character to be S, so let's just scroll till we get to a S, S there. I want this to land 20 frames before the O, so I'm going to set an end offset of 90. So now if we play, you can see the S lands and then the O lands a little bit later. So let's duplicate that again, so left call this left inner and I'm going to set that position to negative 175. I can type it correctly like that. Again let's come to the end, come to the behavior and this time I want the letter L so I'm just going to scroll. If I'm holding down the option key here as I scroll so it, it, it gears it down so I can scroll to exactly the right place. So there you go. That now looks like that. Again, I'm just going to tweak that end offset. So in this case, I'm going to go for 80. Okay, let's play and see how that works. So we're building this up. It's looking quite good. So I'm going to duplicate that again. This one I'm going to call right inner. Set the exposition to 175. Come over to the behavior. Uh, so 70, I'm going to set the end offset of this one to 60 because it's going to come after the O, which was 70. 
this character we want to be T, so again I'll just scroll till we find the T, like so. And then one more time, duplicate, move it over to positive 350 on X, like that. Come to the behavior. Let's uh, set that end offset to 50. So each time I'm moving on 10 frames. So let's go for S, back to for an S there. So now if we play the whole thing, scrolls and assembles. Obviously we don't want it all to start on the same character. So I'm just going to scroll to change the start character, start value for each one. So in this case, let's go for, well, let's leave that as Z. So it really doesn't matter what, what character we start on. We just want a little bit of randomness. And the center, let's go for W there. And what have we got? We've got the right inner, let's just change that one as well. I want to scroll upwards because we want a positive value for these start values. So let's go for, Oh, doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's have a look at that. That all looks pretty nice. So just one other thing I want to do. I want to take this group here and I want to turn on drop shadow. Let's open that up. Let's set the angle to 270. Let's set the opacity to 100. Let's increase the distance quite a bit like that. And let's increase the blur quite a bit like that and now you'll see that looks much more like a slot and there you go our effect is pretty much done one thing you might find it useful to do if you're wanting to reuse this effect or even publish it as a final cut template is to rig the start and end values of the overshoot behaviors so you can easily dial in the letter that you want so in this case, I've rigged the end value of my center slot to this pop-up. And I've got as far as rigging up the first three letters. And although that might seem a bit of a fiddle, it could be time well spent in the long run. There you go. I hope that's been an interesting one. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again another time.